And we're live. Hello. Hey, welcome everybody. This is They Talk Funny. Uh, I'm Paul Ash, and with me is very special guest, Martha Chavez. Hello, Hello Polly. How are you? Long time no see. Long time no see. Uh, no long time no see. Uh, so if uh, for those, wow, we actually have people tuning in already to see. Uh, this is great. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I guess I, I misspelled something. I apologize. It's Martha Chavez or Marta Chavez, uh, if I want to be a little bit bit more correct how are you doing how have you been how have you been oh. through all of this oh you know it's it's been great in a sense because i am a germaphobe and now my fears are justified <laughs> so yes. i love i wash my hand a hundred times and i have a reason for it people don't think i'm weird right in the other hand i have been i am in, an impatient person so i have grown to be patient Mm -hmm. And I have been missing comedy, like, you know, like life itself and pondering if it will ever be back. Can you hear me? I, oh, I can definitely, I can hear you. And, and it's, uh, I, 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 I definitely feel you that uh, about missing comedy. I believe it will be back. I think comedy, I think some of the online stuff will still exist afterwards. Uh, but yeah. when live stages are back, uh, I think people are going to be hitting them with a vengeance. Uh, oh and, yeah, uh, I really, th I really think so too. That they will be hitting it with Avengers because even when we opened here in Toronto, when they mm -hmm. opened in August, that were like uh, very uh, with the, all the cleaning protocols shows yeah. at the Akias and at Comedy Bar, people were coming. Yeah, people yeah. wanted to laugh. You and, know, and, and I mean they they've got. Uh, we were open for about three weeks. Here in Montreal, I know that that the the, the nest spaced out all the tables. Uh, yeah. The, the the wiggle room had uh, they put plexiglass. They redesigned the room, uh, put plexiglass between all, all the seatings, um, and everything that they could to try to make it as safe, and yet still have people in. Now, uh, for people who are tuning in, uh, just say hello, pop in, give us a like. Uh, <coughs> Mar Marta is uh, Marta is a Nicaraguan Canadian comedian. Uh, she is, uh, has had a, 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 a CBC comic special. She's also had a special on the the Comedy Network. She has an album out as well. Uh, if uh, if I remember, it's it's Chunky Salsa. That's the chunky, name. Chunky, chunky, chunky salsa. <laughs> chunky salsa, uh, which is available where? Well, well, uh, in all of the platforms. All of the in, all of, in all of the platforms is available. It came out last year, thank God, because yeah. uh, of, of the revenue that the album has given me. Like, you know, it has helped us to be afloat yes. in a way. Yeah. You know, like um, otherwise, I took a long time to put out an album, and that's why I call it salsa because salsa is uh, is kind of like a, it has a base, but you can put whatever chunks of whatever you want, you know? You can put tomatoes, you can put a lot of things. Now, you, <laughs> you've, you've been a headliner for years, but it was just in like the last two years, you really sort of started skyrocketing. I remember Kenny Robinson talking about how you, you, you've been on fire for the past year and just yeah. just burning, like just before the lockdown happened. Like you, you Imagine just, my luck, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, yeah, you're also an actor, uh, comedian. You you're on uh, uh, the, is it CBC does Because News? Is that yeah, on Because News, yeah. Yeah, and I, you know what, I I didn't see it in your bio, but I remember you being in a Chris Rock film, uh, responding yeah. to Wanda Sykes. Yes, that's a long. I don't put it because it was such a small part. Although I was uh, 13 days on set. But it was a uh, almost non-speaking part. I'm not very proud of it, and it was the stereotypical cleaning lady part. But I was with Wanda, and uh, it's an enduring um, friendship. Not that we talk every day or anything, but we are friendly if we run into each other. Let's say. Yeah. So she knows yeah. that my name is Marta Chavez. That, that's about it. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm friends. We are friends. Yeah, she knows my name. <laughs> 
I like how the, there was the steps down degrading. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we yeah, degraded. She can we pick are me friends. Out of a lineup. Yeah. She can pick me out of a lineup. I'm like, you know, I had forgotten that I had this um, with you. But it, that is one of the, the good things on the lockdown that you just can go, Papa, put your makeup and, <laughs> and, and I'm ready. You don't have to take Uber and ready for the show. This is this is an incredibly just a casual thing. We are talking about comedy. We are going to be talking about writing. We're going to be talking about COVID and talking in general things about your career as well. Um, and you, you, how many appearances have you had at the festival just for last? For those who who, who may be watching who's not from here, I know I have an American comic on uh, later this week. Uh, what? Uh, how many times? Well, remember I used to host, uh, what was the name? Uh, Globcom. Oh, Glo okay, yes, which was be the international show. Show, so I was there like four years in a row for that. Yeah. Then I, I have done three galas. Yes. And I have done the, the Spanglish show. I have done the, uh, here in Toronto, I have done the J JFL, JFL 42. 42. I have done a podcast for JFL 42 with with Marina with Marina. <laughs> the, the last name escapes me, but I, but but you know what I mean. So I've been I think I I believe that I am from the JFL family in Canada. No, I find them, you know I lo I find the people I know Bruce I know Brent from a long time, mm -hmm. I know Zoe even from the Rivoli. And I, they are family to my heart, you know. Mm. Yes, yeah. And you, you, you've not just limited yourself to to performing in Canada. I know you went overseas to perform for the Canadian troops, but you've done other shows outside of Canada. Oh well. yeah, yeah. Yes, it was interesting the Canadian troops, because uh, I did a I did a, a joke that I do I used to do it. And I, it's one of my my hits. That is oh, is evergreen. The joke about cocaine. Yeah. That Latinos didn't bring cocaine uh, to North America, that it's been around for years and blah blah blah. Right, that, that joke. Yeah. And I am doing it in the cyanide desert for the UN troops, and there were Colombian troops who were fighting the drug war, and they just heard the word cocaine, and Latino they didn't even speak English, and from my from the how do you say? From the sides of my eyes, how do you say that expression? Uh, out of the corner uh, of my eye? From the corner of my eye, I, I see a bunch of people leaving the premises, uh, like, a pelot uh, like a platoon of people that look like, of, of, of soldiers that look Latino leaving the premises. And after I was informed that I offended them, that they got personally offended because they thought that I, I am, because I say the word Colombia, on the joke, yes. so they they heard cocaine, Colombia, and they thought I'm dissing them, and they left. <laughs> it was interesting, but, but I mean, you know, I couldn't forgive me. Why didn't I mean? Why didn't they tell me that this could happen? You know, like yeah. they vet your material, they should have said that. Yeah, exactly. If 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 your your material was approved, and yeah, it, it, but in your your uh, when you've done the Spanglish shows. You you mentioned about the fact that there is a uh, uh, like uh, there's a conflict between a lot of the South American countries. Like they don't always get along. It's not it's not just football that they argue over. No, uh, we don't get along. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, it's it's been uh, it's like that. Unfortunately, we because of long time disagreements or it's like rivalries. Mm -hmm. Even in Central America, that we are so small, if you think about it, we are so Nicaragua is about six million people, and like that, from region to region is very different, and um, and we have animosity. I, I, I hate to say it, mm -hmm. we have animosity. But here in Canada, we learn people from uh, from different countries, from the different Latin American countries. We learn to get along because we so are a community. Yeah. Yeah, and so you could hate the the other. Canadians. <laughs> I don't hate anybody. I, I hate everybody in general. Yeah. But yeah. not anybody in particular. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I I, I I understand. You 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 don't you don't uh, generalize your hatred. You'll you'll find one or two people that are idiots, 
that de- are yeah. deserving of it. Like my hate, do you know, if you see my Facebook, my hatred is very unoriginal because I hate Trump uh, with a passion. I, I believe you're the person who who's famous for coining the phrase, uh, the... Uh, Mango uh, Mussolini. <laughs> yeah, Mango Mussolini. Uh, that's a, that was a that's a brilliant turn a good alliteration uh and, and uh yeah and it's obvious like i i see how much content you're putting out online in regards to uh people the, must the, think that i don't work or i don't do anything because i always but whatever i i read like like very fast i i gotta inform the people i got <laughs> to inform the people but I, and now that he leaves but now since i lo- i learned that he lost it's like a when I have precedent to this, like uh, when Doug Ford, when Doug Ford, yeah. I mean, when Rob Ford left yes. because he got sick and all of that, I, I, I just like forgot about him. So that's what I happen. I, I hope that happens with Trump. He, he will fade and we will find somebody else to attack <laughs> or not. <laughs> you just kind of mm-hmm. like the, the, the bar has been set a bit differently at this point in time about, you know, where... Yeah where exactly stupidity lives. Uh, yeah, but you know, speaking about stupidity, uh, it ha- the, the bad part about about the Trump phenomenon is that it has transcend borders. Yeah. Because here in here in Canada, there were like two, three weeks ago, there, went, there were anti-maskers protesting mm-hmm. at Donda Square here in Toronto, and there the, were flags. They with, in Montreal. There were flags, the pro-Trump flags. Yeah. And make America like you're Canadians. What are you doing with that? And there was a rumor the other day on uh, Twitter that Trudeau was training the Chinese to invade the United States. Like you know what I mean? And it, this was uh, this was started by by the Rebel, which is like um, the Rebel rag, the, the Rebel newspaper, which yeah. is like Fox News but worse. It's a tabloid, yeah. but people believe and they are writing and they. It's, it's terrible. I, I would believe. I would think that, in spite that we get that we are close because of Facebook and all of that, and I can see you and all of my friends and all of that. Like I believe that is detrimental and it should go, should disappear and let's go back to when we didn't know that much. You know. <laughs> uh, it's uh, considering that this is considered the the information age. I think it's more like the disinformation age, because no yeah. one really checks <laughs> sources anymore. Uh, which no is one. an unfortunate thing. Um, anyone no, knows who? No, d- sorry, sorry. Yeah, Continue. no. It's just how much Canada is not getting along with China at this point. The idea that we'd be working together with them to take down the states is ludicrous. No, today on QAnon, you know QAnon. Today they said that uh, the Chinese invaded the new, the United States by the Canadian main border. So this is, the, and people believe this. People believe that we are abiding an invasion to the United States when they, if, if we invade them, they cut our cable and then we are screwed. We are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, cut, I, they cut our entertainment. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> but, but we can cut power, which would black out most of the East Coast. Oh, that's uh, true. Right? The, like that, that happened when the ice storm in, hit Montreal. Like it was the, the power lines going down here had New York, well, then again, the Trumpites are, are going to be concerned about New York going dark. No. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, pretty much almost all the way down to Florida uh, lost power because we were no longer supplying it to them. Oh, um, yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. Yeah. That's a good thought not, to have. Not that that's a threat, all right, <laughs> for, for any Trumpites that are tuning in to study up on the enemy. Uh, yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> um. But this is, yeah, so you've been writing a lot about that, comedy-wise. But what is your writing structure? I know, uh, uh, watching your comedy, I feel that you're you're very much a, a like a storyteller, uh, and you usually have the, the twists. Your, uh, one of your classic jokes about the fact that, you know, uh, you, you came from Nicaragua to Quebec because of... Uh, because because some people cannot get get a, get enough political instability in a lifetime. Yeah, exactly. No, I moved to I am from Nicaragua, and because some people cannot get enough political instability in a lifetime, I moved to Quebec. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Mm. I had forgotten it. It's, it's just that you know that I uh, this pandemic 
I have to review, you, you, you know, I have to go and review my material because it's all just like alphabet soup. Mm -hmm. In my head, like things that you knew, that you have instinctively in you, because I do shows, like in non-pandemic, I do four shows a week. And many times of those shows, and sometimes I do on Monday and Tuesday too, I go out to the little rooms. It has been like, boom! Like uh, we were here and we, and, and now I have done, uh, I have done maybe on stage four shows. And uh, the Zoom, uh, but you, what you have to do is keep writing and looking at your material, whatever yeah. video you have of your material, listening to it, so you don't forget it. And, and increasing the volume of your act. But for me, it's very difficult not to refer to what we are living. I always yeah. talk uh, in whatever I'm living, I'm, I'm going through. And unfortunately, we are going to the, through the Rona now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. The Rona. And the Rona. <laughs> we're going through the Rona. And, and uh, we're going through the Rona internationally. And people really, I don't think they really, they want to listen to it, but it's uh, the elephant in the room. Yeah, it, it, it's it's well, it, it's it's been changing. It's been like a, a game changer internationally, like globally. This is something that has affected everyone, uh, even New Zealand. Even if that was just sort of a blip for them, because uh, they they have like a, a smart leader, uh, but a woman. Um, a woman, <laughs> uh, definitely, uh, you know, who, who believes in science and, and, and took the measures. And there was no lip back uh, from the, 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 well, there was some lip back from the country. And it, it is a very, New Zealand is a very macho country on top of that. Uh, yeah. But the, they had no problem listening to, uh, you know, a smart woman give them the, the advice that they, they needed to get through that. And, uh, uh, oh, I, but also, but don't you think that they, all, they could also get, get through that? quicker because they are an island true uh i mean I, newfoundland is 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 now uh, is an island here in canada but they're yeah. having they're having troubles uh yeah. just it's it beginning came, to spike there it. now yeah we, somebody brought it that's the thing and so it, it's it, it's the visitors yeah it's the visitors it's like here they close to they when they close toronto and bonn then people go and have their hair cut or have their shopping in York, in the York region. Then they will close there. Then they go to the door and they will, it's, it's been happening. Yeah. And, and I'm not seeing, um, how would I say, I'm not seeing the light. I am just uh, in denial in a way, living day by day, the pandemic life, trying to do my 1,000 steps. Yeah. <laughs> I've got, I've got a, I have a roommate who's, uh, who's immunosuppressed. So I, so, uh, you know, I have to be very careful. It's, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm not going out. There's only one of us that is, is going out to any of the, the grocery stores, uh, et cetera. So it's been, it's been yeah. trying. Are you under lockdown too in Montreal? Uh, yeah, we are in Montreal. They call them red zones. So, uh, we're, we're, we're at level four, which is the highest level. Uh, and uh, they're talking about shutting down everything uh, as of uh, December 24th until wow. January 11th. So uh, I, I don't know if that means restaurants as well, but anything that's not... Uh, you mean you have restaurants open now? We, we have restaurants open for takeout only. Oh, oh, yeah, we do. We do too. But everything yeah. is closed. Like uh, if... if um, if you want, uh, one of my trips when I go out is to Rexels, because t just to alleviate my desire of shopping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got to be pretty desperate to buy something at the Rexels. Uh, there is, uh, I know, I go buy, like, you know, I, I had the, the roots coming out, so I go buy that. I'm experimenting with my hair. So, so I, I've had the roots coming out as well, so it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of, I, I haven't had a haircut since um, February. But I met you with a ponytail. Yes, I that's used to how have I remember. Yeah. That's how I remember you with the pony pushing me in. The, like I remember you taking care of me in the before the show, the just for laugh and just pushing me on on the on the, on the stage. You know, like it's your turn. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, I don't think I physically pushed. No, no, you didn't push, but I mean, you like patted me. It's your turn. Go, 
go now. Like yeah. very, very loving. That's what I remember. And of course, you doing comedy. And um, I remember you came from Halifax, right? Or from yes. Newfoundland? From the Halifax. Halifax. Yeah. Halifax. Do you go well, back to Halifax? I haven't been this year, but uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I do go back. Uh, I mean, I have a lot of family there, so it's uh, sort of important. My daughter just bought a house. Um, your daughter? Yeah. How old is your daughter? Uh, she is twenty-seven. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bad dad. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty-seven. So. We are old. Our ass yeah. is old. Yeah. <laughs> A 27-year-old child, and I was about 29-year-old. I was about to ask you, how is your daughter? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was also asking you. I imagine a little daughter, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, she. She is. She's. She's married. She's got uh, a wonderful husband who treats her well. Uh, That's so, great. Yeah, and they they just they bought a house sort of in the country at this point. Wow! So you have a place to crash. Yeah, Basically. They, they understood the nature of my career. So when they bought the house, they said, uh, by the way, there's a spare room. So if you need a place to live, uh, <laughs> so it's that kind there of There is a place, yes. Yes. Uh, now, you mentioned that you make sure that you spend uh, time writing. Uh, do you spend, uh, like, how much time every day do you spend writing? Is Is there a structure to it or...? Uh, yes, it is. You know why? Because I have noticed that the more you like, uh, I have, I had to give, um, I had to give a script out for uh, Winnipeg because mm -hmm. uh, the applications for Winnipeg, and they uh, give you themes. Yes. The, for for the galas, and I decided since I am home, I'm gonna write for all of the the themes, and then you start and you you see it, and then you don't like, and then you. You, uh, you know, you place, and then I write for my other show for the, for the when feminists rule the world, mm -hmm. in which I interview feminists from around the world, women that are creating policy, because mm -hmm. uh, I got uh, I got the gig from the Nobel's the Nobel Women's Initiative. For, I I hang out with Nobel Peace Prize winners, Paul. Congratulations! Can you? I got, I cannot say that we are in first name basis, but they are <laughs> the boss of me, so they know all of these interesting women, and I um, I interview them, and I basically the person that doesn't know anything about what I'm asking, but I have to research. Uh, they send me whatever these women like. Uh, there there, are, there is a woman fighting killer robots. So I have found out a lot about killer robots. And then I, I've been writing bits about killer robots, uh, interesting things that are, are nothing to do with me. <laughs> but that's the way I read a lot to be able to write. I read a lot. And I, I, I me and Linda, my wife, uh, we try to live. <laughs> yeah. we, we live in a small apartment in Toronto and, and she works at home which she never did before, I mean, because of the pandemic. So I have learned that I have to keep quiet from nine to five. <laughs> so I don't that I don't drive her crazy. But I haven't learned that that well, because sometimes I forget that she's working. And then, hey, do you want to watch the Bee Gees documentary tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I am yes. working. Yeah, no, yeah. My, my, my partner is working from home as well. And so I've had to learn. Uh, to you know, wait wait until like it's a, a meal time or et cetera to to kind of yeah. interrupt between meetings. Yes, uh, but, uh, but uh, you say about writing. I write about I write about one hour a day. But sorry, but if I stay, if I have time and time, I have these these days because I don't go to the gym. I don't do anything mm -hmm. the the things that I usually do uh, during the twenty five hours that I have to kill before my show at night. <laughs> <laughs> Because you know that we kill time. Yeah, yeah. There, well, I mean, you're, you're spending the time reading. Reading is research, whether or yeah. not it's 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 actually beforehand. And, and spending the hour writing and then editing as well is that does that hour include taking time to edit stuff or do no. you do that separately? No, so separately. But it, it, it's difficult. Remember, it's difficult that. Uh, um, to, to is the I don't I don't. Uh, when I do my jokes, they are not necessarily as they are written yes. because it's performance, right? So whenever I transcribe, it's difficult 
So I be oh, and I, I have I remember me since when I began doing comedy that I have always taped myself always. Yes. Yeah, always. with the big ca with big ass cameras, <laughs> the big with the little yeah. DVs. I have tops of things that I have been meaning to digitalize and put, you know, not to put it out there, but to extract material mm -hmm. that maybe didn't work in those days. And uh, maybe now that I know how to, you know, everything is a stand up comedy. You never finish learning. No. No, Definitely. and then you find out that the Gen Z, Gen Zers, Generation Z that do comedy yeah. think that you're trash. <laughs> <laughs> they think that you that your style of comedy is out of, of fashion because you make people laugh. That is mm. not <laughs> the objective of comedy, according to them. Yeah, yeah there is. Well, okay, what what? How would you define your style of comedy? I define a storytelling, but I do have um, I do have setups and punch in hidden in the stories. Yeah. I always I, I tell a story, but there is always a setup and a punchline. And um, yeah, I like I admire rather I I always admire the storytellers. I admire the uh, uh, Derek Edwards. Yeah. I admire well, uh, Ron James. Yeah. Ron James is so brilliant with the words, and I admire wordsmithery, like they say, wordsmith. Yeah. I admire that, and this is not my language, so I have had to, to really be, be a, a diligent in, many, uh, in learning. How many languages do you speak? Four. Four. And how many have you performed comedy in? In the four. All four. All four, but so, but you know it's difficult when you are not always like when I was in Montreal I would speak French, but yeah. but when you're not always speaking the language it's difficult to have the turns of phrase, to have the it's it's, it's, it's not the same being only bilingual but you have to be bicultural. Yes. And uh, I admire you know whom, hey Patterson, Mike Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> Because but he he, he, ma he makes a joke about how bad his French is. That's that's part yeah. of his charm when he's performing in French. Well, like I do in English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I could do it, but if I, now that there is a club to do it in French, mm -hmm. the Mike Ward's club, I could perfectly yeah. commute from the English to the French, but uh, here in, in, in Ontario... Yeah. It's, it's not possible. I have done it uh, in corporate shows for the government. Right. Yeah. Now, you, you, you do do a good number of corporate shows. Have you done any of the corporate Zooms? Yes. Yeah. I do the corporate Zooms. So I'm yeah. being judged on camera. <laughs> you know, you know, because on, on the corporate shows, I, in fact, I have one on the 18th. I had one last week. All of my Christmas uh, shows, uh, they have commuted uh, to the Zoom, mm -hmm. and they and then you're like, uh, you know, you you're doing the show and so and it's like I say, it's difficult for me to talk about uh, how would I say uh, just just uh, how how would you, how do you say trivial things, mm -hmm. and to say my jokes not acknowledging that we are in this box, on yes. this <laughs> doing this, so I, I, that's what I do. I have an acknowledgement of. Uh, of that we are doing this and then I, I pull up my collection of masks that I have uh, in the all of the things that I have bought in Amazon that I don't need and I have made uh, Jeff Bezos a billionaire because <laughs> I needed a unicorn hat why not I'm preparing for the apocalypse so I, I, I bring the elephant in the room in that at that moment but uh, but uh, they are the Corporate shows are usually difficult because of the things you can't and cannot say. Yeah, you know. Yeah, are you are you task writing when you are going to be doing a a, a, a corporate show? Do, you, do yeah. you research the company or do you ask them to send you stuff so you you can tailor your jokes to them? Yes, yes, but then you tailor a little bit. Let's say not no, not the whole act mm -hmm. has to be t tailored for them. You tailor a little bit and then you move on because they, in, really they don't want to be hearing about the company all night. But they appreciate that you take the time to dedicate 
a little bit to, to their company, but I learned to do that by doing the road. I always yeah. did five minutes in the town that I, about the town where I went. I learned about the cow. There is a, they, they worship a cow in, uh, in Woodstock, Woodstock, Ontario. There is a cow in the, I learned, I learned, I learned little trivia about the little towns that I went and, uh, and uh, they, people feel appreciated, but corporate is, is also, corporate is also more serious. It's more politically mm. correct, especially if it's the government. But I have yes. never been politically incorrect, you know. Yeah. Like uh, I have never, I have never been to the extreme. No, you cannot say this. But I have never been also derogatory in my head. Although yes. some people have found things that I have said derogatory, and they have told me so after the the shows. There's there's all, always somebody at some point, and, and one of, one of the things you probably lose a little bit doing the zooms is uh, part of your charm on stage is you will often do an aside to a, a particular audience member mm -hmm. and uh, you know you, you might mention something about uh, something that happened well in, in your cocaine joke that you referenced earlier talking about the 1930s and then you turn yes. to, <laughs> to anyone that, that. with white hair going do you remember sir just remember uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes that is lost the the banter with the audience is lost, especially because because on Zooms the audience believes that they can just yell anything, that they, they can just uh, sometimes, according to the younger comics who do a lot of Zoom, people trollers trolls, yeah, yeah they get there on purpose to insult people. So a lot of people choose not to uh, they they choose to mute the audience, so yeah. we don't hear anybody laughing. Yeah. So it's complicated. I'm learning how to perform to silence. In other words, <laughs> <laughs> I can go bomb. I can go bomb everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yes, silence with confidence. Uh, there's uh -huh. at least you're not hearing the crickets. Yeah, uh, at least I'm not hearing the unless I I want to, right? Uh, there, there is. Um, do you, do you have any like sort of formulas? I know you mentioned you're doing, making sure you have your set of punches in your stories. Yeah. Uh, the, the taking the five minutes, that's, that's actually, like that's a Derek Edwards lesson. That's like a, a, a he's yes. the person I sort of like attribute that, that piece of knowledge to. Uh, but do you, when you are writing, what, what, how are you looking for, for structure? I know that you said that you don't do word for word. You sort of just, you remember why it's funny to you so you can, you can express that humor. You can no, I do work for work when it comes because you know that if you take a lot, especially me that I have an accent, if I ramble a lot, if I take, a, I lose their attention. So mm -hmm. I, I, um, I, 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 it is very structured. But let's say if I, there is not word by word, right? Very structured. Although I know I get I, and I know the punchline has to come because punchlines are surprises, right? Right. So there is a lot of technique in a way that I learned from books and, and whatnot, and there is a lot of um, of, the, of experience, of experience. Uh, nothing, nothing. I think stand-up comedy is experience. Nothing. Uh, uh, how how does nothing nothing substitutes experience. Experience. Yeah, I, I learned to do, I learned at the beginning you learn from the others, right? So yeah. because with Yak Yaks, they send you to tour with, uh, with the headliners. And uh, so I would make a point to watch the four shows mm -hmm. of the headliner, even if I didn't like them, to watch, the, to watch all the shows, because that's the only way that you learn how to be uh, fake, the fake spontaneity <laughs> that you have in stand-up comedy, the, that you know that, oh, when he says something, he sounded so brilliant, but it's something that he says or she yeah. says, or they yeah. say. They say. And they say, and, uh, and that's the way you learn, by watching the others. The one thing that I, I criticize many times about, about new comedy is, that the kids learn from their peers, from their amateur night mm -hmm. peers. So it's like learning from somebody that doesn't know how to drive. You repeat their the mistakes. mistakes. 
Yeah. yeah, you have to watch. I always advise to the youngsters, watch stand-up comedy in a club, a headliner, for, for somebody with experience, whether you like him or not. Because no matter if you watch 300 hours of, uh, of Netflix, that is not as spontaneous. You, it, you, don't, it you don't feel a crowd, which is, when you're doing it live, you kind of mm -hmm. have to. Yeah. yeah, the crowd. That's what I crave. We are like vampires in reality. That's what I crave, uh, the crowd. But I, but I like, uh, I, I, I want to be alive, let's say. Yes. I yeah. don't crave it that much. I have had opportunities to go do shows in Oshawa. But uh, at the end, I said no. Because, I mean, they booked me and then I changed my mind. Because Oshawa was open. The Yak Yaks in Oshawa mm -hmm. was open. But then I thought I had to travel with a comic that I know I don't know how strict their bubble is. Yeah. My yep. bubble is my wife and my cats and that's it in the supermarket and the lady at Rexel. That's all. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> that's all oh, and the homeless. Because there is a, a, a unfortunately in the in my street on Church Street. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't live on church but I live in, in, the, in the in the area. On Church Street there are a lot of um, of homeless now and yes. uh, and mentally ill or homeless screaming not, not only one screaming and i uh so linda my partner she sends me with little pocket with, with little uh plastic bags you know mm -hmm. s plastic seal bags with change so so i give them change change i go yeah. and then i, I said but i'm not gonna know Anymore, like in the summertime, you, you can't tell who I'm, I'm not really going to know because people, sometimes you dress in rags. They're not going to know who the homeless are. And then she tells me, well, ask them, do you have a postal code? No. Okay, so here is some coinage to you. They say, I'm going to, I say to her, people are going to think that I'm nuts too. And then she says, no, they're going to think you're the angel of change. <laughs> 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 she gives me a, a, a Linda. I've been I've been with her for ten years, and she gives me amazing lines, amazing <laughs> lines because <clears throat> because I mean this is her language. So mm -hmm. I run things by her, and she always has like a twist. I should credit her. My comedy improved greatly because of her. <laughs> there uh, now. Uh, I, I, as an oat woman who, who's been uh, performing, have you found that uh, attitudes in Canada has changed towards uh, gay people? Towards gay people since you've been since you since you started performing. Um, well, I, I wasn't out at the beginning. Okay. I wasn't out because I it was difficult for me. Remember, I started in '95. Yeah. I, uh, I it's not that I was in. I had a husband, but uh, it was my husband for immigration. <laughs> and I can say that because the statute of limitation is over. But, uh, but uh, so, so I talk about that, but I seldom talk relationships in mm -hmm. my act. I always, that's, that's why maybe it's a, I am very silly in, uh, in my act and, and, and stuff because I never talk relationships. I talk about me, I talk about things that, that, that bother me, like my weight, like uh, my accent, and then my travels. But so I was never in. I so was never. I was never in. But uh, I came out like in two thousand and five, maybe. Okay. But uh, jo I come out very casually. I don't. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't uh, dwell. You know, I just talk like a person that has a relationship with somebody of uh, my same sex. What I have noticed really in audiences since Trump, since Trump yeah. became a uh, president, like in places like Niagara Falls, where there are Americans mm -hmm. or Windsor or, or like uh, border towns, mm -hmm. I noticed that there was a lot more racism, you know? Like I never noticed, like in Canada maybe, in Canada we know that racism is passive aggressive. <laughs> They will hide it, but uh, it's, it was like I was their friend. I always felt that I, I, I become their friend because I'm unthreatening right. in a way. But uh, in, in, in the last four years, I, kn I knew that in certain jokes, I had to, st uh, to, to watch my step. 
You know, like, but I, for example, there was a woman, a Trump supporter in the crowd, and I said to her, well, I didn't start this fight. He hates everything I am. I, I am a, a woman, I am a lesbian, and I am, I am Lati Latina, I am a lesbian, and I am fat. I am practically Rosie O'Donnell. I am the trifecta of everything he hates. He hates Latinos, he, he, he hates gay people, he hates fat people, and, and then she laughed. And from then on, we became friends. And at the end, she wanted to hug me, which I reluctantly did because I didn't know that if she had a knife, you know, ready. <laughs> like, uh, um, and also but, being a bit of a germaphobe, too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, uh, but you know, I, I um, uh, there are a lot now, currently, there are a lot of what they call safe rooms. I don't know if you're aware about that, in which uh, the, bo the bookers put no homophobia, no racism, no misogyny, no, 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 a lot of no. Yeah. And there is, those rooms are good for certain people because uh, maybe people that, 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 that would go triggered or that had a lot of problems about that would not go to, to quote unquote normal clubs because of uh, whatever they could hear. But I cut my teeth uh, as a, the only Latin Latin woman in the Yaki X roster, mm -hmm. the only person with an accent and the few one of the few women touring. I cut my teeth that way, so no, nothing really. I I learned how to deal deal with uh, with all of those things, but uh, I mean, you know, uh, being like in Toronto and how central Toronto is to the entertainment industry. Uh, are there? Um, can you name some some comedians who impress you now, like who, who are, or pre COVID at least, that that you think are, are rising stars? Young comics. Um, well, who would I say? There are there are a lot. There are a lot. and now there are a lot of, of comics with accents too. There is yeah. Carol Zoccoli, Brazilian. There is Isham Kelati, who is uh, African. I don't want to say the wrong part where he is because I don't remember at the moment. <laughs> And there is uh, there are there are several comics who have an accent. I there are, there are some great new comics, but I cannot tell you at, at the top of my head a name at the moment because I don't sleep and I don't remember things. Or maybe it's dementia. <laughs> maybe it's dem <laughs> dementia. I don't know. I love Carol Zoccoli, the mm -hmm. Brazilian uh, the Brazilian girl. I love uh, Ana Maria Stojic. Yes. I think yeah. I'm pronouncing well her name. I love Robbie Hoffman yeah. from Montreal. Yeah. But well, Robbie is already an Emmy winner. She's yeah. no young comic. She, she's now better. She's now in a in a higher echelon than we are. Who <laughs> else do I love? I love Kyle Brownrigg. Yes. Kyle Brownrigg. I love um, Marito. Tomorrow. Marito. Marito Lopez, my child. You know Marito. <laughs> Little Marito Marito, Lo Marito Lopez? No, I don't think I've seen them. Yeah, oh, I love Nigel to. Nigel Gr uh, Grin Grinstead. Grinstead. Nigel yeah. Grinstead. I love all those comics. Uh, there are there are a lot of uh, of good comics, and then by the same token, there are a lot of horrendous comics, in the sense that because of that, that uh, they think that they are being badass. Uh, so they just go in and, and run for forever, not one laugh, and they think that that's the style of comedy, <laughs> you yeah. know. No, uh, they they they're they're trying to show that they're clever because they can say things that are offensive. Uh, basically, the edge lords. Uh, the edge lords. No, no, but you know what I do with the edge lords? I have had arguments like this because uh, yes, I am all for freedom of speech. You can say whatever the hell you want, but that goes for me too. Too. Yeah. I can tell you whatever the hell you want, and then I'm gonna go to your Facebook uh, profile. I'm gonna get a picture of your mother or your daughter or your girlfriend, and I'm gonna say that they look like an alligator. See how much you like it. Immediately they go. I want to shut your mouth. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, it's the same way that you think that you can say that you can say anything. I can say any, that it bothers me. I yeah. don't know why people get gets uh, gets mad, but they get mad because now we minorities have a mouth. We can answer before they could get away with saying whatever. Yeah. With saying uh, and comedians that I used to love before. 
uh, peers rather that I mm. I used to like. Uh, there are some that I uh, that I unfriended <laughs> mm, because yeah. of their passion for for this in the transgender and for because of the passion of of, of, of just saying queer fag. Uh, no, queer is not that bad. I mean, dyke, fag, uh, tranny, and, and thinking that that is avant-garde. You're not Bill Hicks. You're not Doug Stanhope. You're not any of the badass comics because you say those things. And and since we are a community in which there are mm-hmm. the, those minorities, it's, it's, like a, it's not that I, I am politically correct or advocate for that, but I, I, you're dissing my friends. Yeah. You know? Well said. Well yeah. Said. Uh, now, what, what, what's, how do you feel about uh, the CASC, the Canadian Association of Stand-Up Comics, and, uh, and the work that they're doing? I didn't, um, well, I think that it's great that they are doing that work, but I think that it is, uh, it is, it is, how do I say, it has been difficult. Yeah. It has been difficult for them to say that, uh, to establish, rather. That that stand-up comedy is uh, is an art, although I think that it is an art. Mm. They are doing great things, though, in the sense that they found the, they have the medical insurance, which mm-hmm. Scott Falconbridge was yes. the one who brought it to them, and they are they, it's, it's an uphill battle, but I think that eventually it may take off. You know, yep. to to, to have so. it recognized so we can comedians can apply for grants the same way that that theater shows could or yeah. uh you know or playwrights could um, yeah but that's another thing you know i have applied for grants and i have got grants on the not huge grants but developing grants mm-hmm. to to write to write to research and write my one person show not to perform yeah. they don't pay for anything like that they don't getting a grant is so difficult uh, i mean first of all there is an art in applying for a grant, and what I don't, uh, what I, what the on, my only critique about the the, the, the Canadian, the association, the CASC, mm-hmm. is that y- young people that have been on stage like two, three times, not developed. They believe that they, they tomorrow they can get a grant. That yeah. is, I, I don't know how they do it in French Canada that they have a a, a, a union and all that. By what is your take on that? My take, I, well, the, the thing is, it, it's been in Quebec for for such a long time. It's it's now it's no longer the wild west. People kind of know the rules or the standards and practices to go with it, and because of that, uh, it's leveled out. Like at in the beginning, once we get that kind of recognition, there might be a bunch of wild things happening, but then it's going to set into a routine that everyone is going to be more or less aware of the rules and we can all work together as a community. Uh, yeah. The, the <clears throat> hardest part with organizing comedians is uh, all it takes is one comic to, you know, to undercut somebody else to, to get a room or to get a show uh, and uh, for a booker to be less concerned about quality and more concerned about the dollar, you know, value. So yeah. if I can if I can get a hack comic for half the price of a of a, a true artist, then uh, yeah, I'll put on the show for with with that guy because I'll still sell the tickets because people in Canada don't know no one knows a comedian's name and that's kind of one of the things that Cask is trying to change is they want the Canadian performers to be recognized. Yeah, uh, but for uh, example, I, I I'm not to interrupt you. Um, yeah, no, no. I it's think that, that that's why in French Canada works because the supply is a lot less than in English Canada. In English Canada, anybody underdog becomes a comedian. So if if I don't want to do a show because I have qualms about the money that you want to pay me, another person will do it. Yeah. For the half, that that's what it is. If if we if we were if there, were, I believe that French Canada has a less supply of comedians i don't know if that has changed has uh, that I, changed um well they i mean they have Le de humor uh, 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 i i th- i think they have uh i think they actually probably have more comedians on a per capita basis 
Like, uh -huh. if you just count heads, they have less, but that's because that province isn't the total, you know, of Canada. Um, and it's it's also, they're, they're slightly more homogeneous in, in, in culture than Canada is. I mean, uh, Alberta comics have a flavor. Toronto comics have a flavor. The Maritimes uh, have a flavor. Uh, yeah. And, and, and just like in Montreal, that's one of the reasons why, uh, like, uh, you know, comedians coming in who don't understand the, the Montreal culture have a trouble sometimes adapting to the Montreal audiences yeah. is, is because each city has its own sort of flavor. The, the, the audience that the, the comedians who grew up sort of also grow the audience. So when people are learning about what to expect from a comedy show, they learn from their locals. So a guy like Joey Elias, who is mm -hmm. like Montreal's comedy king, uh, the quintessential. Member, yeah, m uh, audiences will expect that's what comes from a comedian because also the younger comics are coming up. They sort of emulating Joey, mm -hmm. right, and Joey's style because that's what the audiences are reacting to. Then you get an angry comic, you know, from <laughs> from Toronto, uh, you, you know, where they where they they just stand behind the mic and they don't move at all. They just you know, and they they rail out about the things that they hate. They come to Montreal and then they discover that that uh, Montreal audience are going. That's yeah. That's a pretty harsh attitude. Are you okay? Like the, the it, it doesn't have that same flavor. No, uh, no. It, it is it is different. No, funny's funny. So it does work. You know, it, it does work. work. Yeah, but I mean, I I am glad, I'm happy that I started out in Montreal yeah. because uh, I was a minority within a minority. Mm -hmm. uh, allophone that they call, but uh, it, it took a while to really adapt to Ontario. Like it's it's, it's a lot more cutthroat. I don't yeah. know now, but but when I started in Montreal, there were very few comics, yeah. anglophones. They were like that click, and um, and then here is a lot more people. There is a lot more uh, that they can say. Well, you, you and working with Yakex was uh, like boot camp. Because yeah. uh, if you don't cut it on the road, they just have other people to put on. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what I think that, that maybe the problem would be for the association. Who determines who is a comedian? Because what I have heard with the association, I have heard from the newbies that they thought that, that the association would just ask a booker to pay them for the spot, not for the quality. To pay, like you don't pay less than let's say $120 for opening and maybe you're very new it's like what is a comic and what is not a comic how do you establish rank how do how do how do you establish seniority i don't know how the french canadians well, do it but um, there must be a way but it's not we are not there yet yeah I, again i think it's it's when the rules kind of get set i think it's sort of like uh, you know, it, it, what they're asking is if a booker is putting on a show, these are the minimum rates for the, that amount of time or that position. Uh, yeah. Like be it the host or be it the, the middle or be it the feature. And uh, a, an established comic, a good comic with a following can come in and say, well, I want more than that to do that, to do that position. Yeah. But if a, a booker goes and, and pays somebody less than uh, the the established rate, then they all the comedians have to say no to that booker for yeah. future bookings, which yeah. is going to be sort uh, sort of the hard part. Once it gets established that we can do that, then the bookers have to respect the rates. It's sort of like saying you're like, um, well, you you've worked on films. You know the difference between actra and yeah. a non-union film. Yeah. Right. So uh, actor gives you a certain level of protections and it gives you a certain rate. Uh, yes. But the thing is, if if the if the film is not giving you uh, that guaranteed rate, uh, then it doesn't have access to actor level performers. No, no. So, exactly. So, yeah. So that's what Cask is trying to establish with, uh, to my understanding, with uh, uh, the, the Canadian Union uh, of, uh, of Standard yeah. Comedians. Well, I hope that it does take off. I know that they were working with Actra at one point. Yeah. That they uh, so so I I well, if it does take off, I hope that is a good thing. 
Yeah, the, et... the, the francophone comedians are part of the UDA, which is also, which is French Actra uh, in, in Quebec. So uh, any French production has those standards. And that they, the UDA, like Actra is for film and television, UDA is for stage, film and television. So uh, they cover pretty much everything that's, I think, I don't know if they include music or not, uh, but they, 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 they include all of those things. So they have set rates. That's, that's one of the reasons why at Le Bordel, uh, uh-huh. the, 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 the headliner sets are like, they don't really have headlining sets. They have shorter sets, even by established comics, not because the comics can't do the time, but if they do the time, then they are, should be bumped up into a higher pay rack, a bracket, which a small club can't support. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's sort of a trade off. Is they 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 do these shorter sets uh, to be workout sets, uh, and that's how how they can they can establish as a club. Uh, wow, yeah. we just got a bunch of people tuning in. Uh, say hi. Say where you're watching from. Click the like button. Um, <laughs> hi. We're gonna do all this wonderful stuff. Uh, <laughs> this is a great thing. It's better than the Zoom. Thank you. This this is this is well. It's not mine. I don't want to say thank you. Uh, I use a Streamyard. Streamyard is uh, a, a great product. They don't pay me. I actually have to pay them. But it's uh, uh, oh, there wow. is a free version available. Uh, but but Streamyard. Uh, if somebody comments on say uh, YouTube or or uh, on Twitter, people are watching us on Twitter. By the way, uh, oh. you, we can actually put their comments up like this here. So StreamYard is the company. If anyone's interested in, in hosting their own uh, video podcast like this or video live stream, uh, connect wow. with me and I can get you a discount uh, for, for signing up. Oh, and I may sign up. I may start doing shows on my own. Yeah. And inviting all of my friends from all across the world that I have because I do comedy in Spanish too. Mm-hmm. So I could invite the Guatemalan comics that I taught I taught comedy in Guatemala, and now they they, they teach. <laughs> <laughs> last year, last so year like when Amway? I got to, yeah, last year when I got to Guatemala, they were teaching already stand up comedy, <laughs> and uh, and they were good students. I'm telling you, I'm proud. I'm proud of my Guatemalan students. Well, but the what, thing is, again, there were there were no stage time. You right. can't grow without a stage time. You know, it's not a culture. Latin America is only awakening to stand up. Mm-hmm. So the, the the best place now is in Costa Rica. Is what is more established. Right. But uh, and they do it in big theaters and no, but they, I don't think there are comedy clubs per se. It's not yet. a it's not a culture that yet. Yeah, it's not a, a thing that people do. Mm-hmm. Maybe I will retire in Guatemala and open my own comedy club. <laughs> and uh, and apply all of of everything I have learned <laughs> all, all in, the, in com- uh, from com- com- comedy clubs owners. Now, now I I didn't realize that you also uh, ran a course. What what for if anyone's watching this uh, to learn about writing comedy, what 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 advice from your course would you would you give? I would say uh, that exactly what I told you. You have to watch. A lot of stand-up comedy live, live, which in the pandemic is not applicable anymore. Yeah, and you have to to read books about a, a structure. Before mm-hmm. it's like painting, Picasso before learning to to make those the weird women and, and everything. Mm-hmm. He learned to paint like classically. To, yeah. to in order to deconstruct, you have to learn how to build. And yes. there are there are there are there are blocks, you know. There are ABCs like uh, the Judy Carter book, mm-hmm. Jay Sankey book to learn how uh, to, to yeah. Jim Jim Madrinos to learn how to to write a joke or or, uh, and then you learn on your own. You learn uh, you start learning on your own of uh, how to milk a premise and also write about what you know. Yeah, that's that's why I, I only write about myself. <laughs> <laughs> but then lately, I have been remembering childhood experiences, and I realize that I talk a lot about when I was a child. This and about religion. I have like three galas of uh, of Winnipeg, in which my religious bits make it, yeah. and uh, it's, it's just about religions from the eyes of a child, and uh, and people like that. 
you know, like when I was growing up and the, when we used to go to the, to the procession of the Passion of the Christ, what was happening and stuff like that, you know. And, yeah. the, and because you can like you can't just talk about Tinder. <laughs> no. Especially when you didn't even have any idea what Tinder is. Like me, I have never been on Tinder. <laughs> so you're happy. Okay. I am happy. Uh, I am a happy person. I've been in a 10 years relationship and we never fight because my wife is white. That's why our, our success is based on the color of our skin. That's the foundation. She doesn't steal my foundation. I hate to share my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to share my makeup. I am a germaphobe. And I don't steal her foundation either because if I put her foundation, I will look like like if I'm going to Marie Antoinette's ball. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> See, I just quizzed a joke right there. You did. You did. Yeah, and we, yeah. we, we, we are, uh, we've been at this for an hour. Normally, this is, is a, uh, just a 30-minute uh, with a little extra show. This has been fantastic. Thank uh, you. Have Have you had fun here, Martha? Have Have I what? Have you had fun? Oh, I had a lot of fun. I love talking about comedy. I comedy is my passion, and I'm as, I am studying lately. I'm studying a lot of of what is happening new, because uh, you have to keep relevant. I mean, you don't have to change your style to adapt to what is new happening, but you have to enlighten yourself with uh, uh, all the new trends. Now, before we go, if anyone watching has any questions, please just type them in the chat. I notice that like, we have a, a good number of people watching. I'm just, uh, they're not, they haven't been commenting. Now, you, you have uh, your website, uh, but it's, it's currently under reconstruction at this point? Yes, you know, because uh, I, needed to, I need to vamp it up, and I haven't found somebody to do it. If you have somebody, please send it to me their name. Mob Boss Joe is uh, she's the one that does the the website. For, oh, for Mob Boss, Ma, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna so ask her. That, that's, I'm gonna that's, ask that's, her about that. Yeah, yeah. That's I, her, I her prime job, and your CD uh, is Chunky Salsa. Yes. Uh, so it's and it's on all the platforms. If anyone wants it, and now one of the things uh, we we touched on a little bit uh, with with Mango Mussolini, uh, <laughs> but uh, with everything else that's happened in the states, and uh, you are. You are huge with human rights and, and, and uh, um, looking for protection and making sure that they are voiced. Uh, I haven't asked you about the Black Lives Matter movement uh, at all. Do you, oh. do you have any hopes? Do you think that with Biden there's, there's going to be positive change in the States? Do you, what sort of I, changes do you envision happen? You know what? I think that I have grown to be a cynic. And yeah. cynical about a lot of things, and uh, um, I do well. I do hope that something positive is coming, but uh, and I do hope that with all of uh, of the members of uh, POC members in the cabinet, there will be some positive changes uh, concerning the the rights of of people of color, color, especially black people. I have been studying since the whole Black Lives Matter thing. I have been reading a lot about it, about the civil rights movement, about the poets of the time, like James Baldwin and uh, Langston Hughes. Because if you think about it, if you think, if you just think about it, black people didn't have the right to vote until maybe 60 years ago. Yeah. When was it? So if I were, if I, if I were black, I would be I would thinking all I want is justice. Right? Because if I wanted vengeance, I would be burning your city to the ground. Yeah. I mean, I mean, how is it possible that they would that they can kill people in their sleep? Yeah. And and they can kill it in, in, with impunity. Now I don't know. Uh, people think that, um, that 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 Biden is very progressive. But Biden is uh, Biden was Mr. Iraq War. Yeah. And the in the he voted like I hope I do hope, but I it's not that ah oh, I think it's it's the second coming. And besides, they have to deal with the pandemic. Mm. So uh, you, yeah. you mentioned earlier about not really like finding racism was more passive aggressive, except for in border towns in the last four years. Towards so uh, so my experience as a comic. Yeah. But I have been finding out like when I when I. Uh, when I went as a delegate of the Nobel Women's Initiative, 
I was still talking about uh, in, on, in my act, oh, Canada is the best place in the universe, it's multicultural and all that. But when I went with them, and I went with Tantu Cardinal, who is a, 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 an indigenous actor, who was advocating for water in, near the Tar Sands in, Fort, in yeah. Fort McMurray and all that. And I started reading about indigenous issues here in Canada. I discovered that uh, that paradise, that adoptive mother that Canada has been for me, because Canada embraced me like I was a refugee. Uh, my adoptive mother used to beat up her own children. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> so, it's been a, it's been an awakening. I know that we have a lot to work for here in Canada too. It's not perfect. We are better than them. We are better than in the United States. But for so many people, for for indigenous people especially, this is a very oppressive uh, system. What's happening in in Nova Scotia in the the past two months has been very telling as well. Um, there's a there's a book uh, if I can recommend it to you and uh, it's called Why I Hate Canadians. Oh, uh, I'm gonna by, I'm gonna write it down right now. Why I Hate Canadians. Yeah, by Will Ferguson, uh, and uh, it's it's a great sort of treaty of, on on what it is about what is the national identity of Canada, and part of it is the fact is well we're at least we're not as bad as the states. Uh, and uh, forgetting that Aboriginals exist—that's it's yeah. it's a, it's a comedic treaty, but like a, a like a, a take, and it, he sort of calls us out on a lot of our myths. Oh, I'm so, gonna read it for sure. Yeah, I have time. <laughs> 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 we have time. That's the thing, you know. Like uh, my heart breaks to see so much pain and, and so much people losing, losing their livelihood, including us artists. Mm -hmm. Uh, but people closing, people be becoming homeless, people like there is a, but in the other hand, if you only see that, you're going to go mental. And I'm already there, you know, like it's not that I, I have to push myself alone. I'm already there. But if, but you have to concentrate in the, in the good aspect. We have a lot of time to do things that we didn't have time to do before. And another thing is we don't need anything. We don't need shopping for Christmas. We don't need, like the bay keeps sending me brochures about about the clothes that are in style, shoes that are in style. Where the hell am I going to go? I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> like, fuck you and your styles <laughs> to just go around the house. And so all of this crazy capitalism that we have to buy, 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 buy. Let's take, let's take, uh, let's forget it for a while. But the last pair of shoes I, I've, I've worn for, for a thousand steps. That's it. That's uh, it. That's yeah. it. No, I have like, I am, I am Imelda Marcos. I have, <laughs> I have like, fit, like I, I only wear one, like my shoes never waste. They yeah. never, they never, uh, they, how do you wear say? Out. They never wear out because I have so many. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> you know, but, but at the moment I have nowhere to go. <laughs> Where am I going to go? Uh, Martha, so, it, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Yes, uh, I, I think we, I, we're going to just wrap this up. Uh, for those of you watching, please find Martha Chavez. Her website will be up and fixed. If I know Mob Boss Joe, uh, I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to talk to her. And another thing I wanted to ask you: yes. uh, follow me on Instagram, uh, comedian uh, comedian Martha Chavez with an S at the right, end. Right there, comedian Martha Chavez, and, and on, on Facebook, Instagram. on my uh, fa Facebook page. Facebook I, as well. So it's a, a, if you search for comedian Martha Chavez on Facebook, with putting in the spaces, you'll be able to find her on Facebook. Uh, uh, yeah, so. I, I am on Twitter, but I'm not very good at Twitter. I think <laughs> on Twitter, you, yes, you have to like uh, pick. You have a, to focus. A, you have to be uploading every. Uh, yeah, and also I, I tweet in English and Spanish, and uh, it's like I hadn't, I haven't found like a, a huge audience on Twitter. I, I it's, it's a different game. That, that's one of the things I've I've actually kind of learned doing these. This is this is episode thirty one, I believe, uh, with you, Marta, and, yeah. and it's uh, um, for every person who hits like, that means there's twenty one more more uh, people that will be introduced to you. But oh. at the the same time, though, uh, if you're putting up like for YouTube, if you put up different types of content on one channel. 
uh, the other content will be recommended to the, to the people. But if they pass on it because it's not either in their language or it's not the same style of show that they're looking for, uh, then that sort of ends up burying your channel. So for yeah. those of you who are watching, please press like on this because this really helps out the channel. That's okay. like why I keep on asking people to hit like and subscribe. Uh, well, this is a YouTube channel? Uh, I, I'm actually I'm, I'm switching over to a new YouTube channel just for They Talk Funny. Uh, but I have my base YouTube channel this is going out to. We are broadcasting right now, Marta, on uh, five different channels. We are oh. live on Facebook. We have my, my base uh, Paul Ash uh, channel on YouTube. But we also are on the They Talk Funny YouTube channel. Uh, oh. We're also on uh, my, my Paul Ash Twitter. Right now, people are watching us on Twitter. I can see there's oh. one person watching on Twitter right now. Oh, uh, I wanted and, to. So, and sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Go right I, I, well, I'm going to contact you privately because I don't even have a YouTube channel. And I have like an incredible amount. I tape all of my shows. <laughs> <laughs> I tape all of my shows. I have an incredible amount of things. Even pro I cannot put my Just for Laughs. We are not allowed to to put our clips from Just for Laugh or or from... J uh, Just for Laughs has clips of you up right now, so they probably wouldn't want the, the, the competition. No, uh, they, they, they don't. But I, I have good professional tapes that I have taped myself. Mm -hmm. I want to have like a, a, a show that I run. I want to have presence on the YouTube. Like I imagine I'm so old that I call it the YouTube. The YouTube. <laughs> the YouTube, but I haven't, it's, it's something that I haven't uh, dedicated myself. So don't look at me on the YouTube, but I will have <laughs> one after. Maybe, maybe you can guide me, Paul, on that. It, it will be my pleasure. It will be my pleasure. It's simple. It's very simple. Okay. Uh, okay. So Thank okay, you, Martha. Thank you for everybody who's out there. Thank you for having me. Thank you. My pleasure. Everyone, bye -bye. Ha have a good night. We're waving goodbye. Goodbye. Adios. I'll take care.